What is up guys, Rick Hack is here and today we are talking about the Dark Zone in the Division and how it has greatly improved with Patch 1.2. Now as someone who does a variety of different games, mainly right now Destiny and the Division, I always think it's funny that when I put out a Division video I always get some smug Destiny people coming in and saying stuff like, oh people still play this game? And while they certainly have a point, the popularity of the Division has fallen off quite a bit and if you stop playing the Division I totally understand this game has had a lot of big problems. I think it's pretty ironic that Destiny and The Division have had basically the exact same problems off launch. Not enough endgame content, an unrewarding loot system, you could not have drawn up the similarities any better. Now in Destiny's credit, it improved the game drastically over time thanks to people being able to bring up these problems and the developers being gracious enough to actually listen to their community and implement fixes. Because of that, Destiny Destiny is a massively improved game over when it originally came out. And The Division is kind of doing the same things as well. Trust me guys, as a Division player, it has a lot of problems and it still has a ways to go. However, just like it's important to bring up these problems so the developers can fix them, it's also very important to address when the developers do things right, to let them know that they're on the right path. That's why we're making this video today. The improvements to the Dark Zone, I think from what I've been able to play, have been been fantastic. I've been enjoying my time in the Dark Zone a lot more ever since patch 1.2 came out, so that's where we're going over today. So what changed in the Dark Zone? Well the first thing is that you actually get good loot. Thank goodness, it has been a long time since you could actually go into the Dark Zone and get really, really good loot. And that has kind of finally become the case again. Now, before patch 1.2, you got, you know, there was high ends dropping everywhere. It was just a sea of gold. However, none of these high ends were actually very good. They all spawned at uh, 163 gear score, which is like the lowest possible gear score. Even, I remember if you're in the absolute top portion of the Dark Zone, the hardest content at the time in terms of the Dark Zone, you'd still get the worst gear score items to drop, which was absolutely insane. Well, it appears that they have definitely addressed this this time around. And, you know, going into the Dark Zone this time, I'm finding like 240 gear score set gear drops, and I'm also getting 200 gear score plus weapons and armor all the time. Now, I do realize that some of this does have to do with the fact that they raised the levels of all of the enemies in the Dark Zone. Now the lowest level bracket is level 32 for the Dark Zone, whereas before it was level 30. So this is definitely a factor in higher gear, uh, gear score gear dropping in the Dark Zone. However, you know, even the fact that I'm getting set armor, I, there's multiple times where I got set gear in the Dark Zone, and before, I, I just didn't. And again, I am getting a lot higher gear score items. 240 is insanely better than anything I was getting previous to patch 1.1. So going in to the Dark Zone has yet again become a profitable activity, so I'm very glad that that's the case. There's also a few new features added into the Dark Zone as well, most notably the ability to cut the rope on a group extracting. So before patch 1.2, you could simply put your loot on the extraction rope and then just run away. And then that loot was safe, it would be extracted and everything would go well. However, now if you put your gear on the extraction rope, someone else can come along and cut the rope, dropping all of the loot attached to that rope entirely, and it's just a free-for-all for all of the loot laying on the ground at that point. That is definitely, although it's never actually happened to me yet in the Dark Zone, it's already adding such a degree of tension when you're extracting because it's a little bit longer. It takes longer for your gear to actually extract now once you put it on the rope. So it gives people a chance to actually come along and cut that rope. And it just, again, adds more tension. You actually have to watch over your loot. And if there is another group kind of lurking around, you don't just feel safe. Everyone doesn't just run for the rope because that was basically what they used to do. Everyone would just make a mad dash for the rope, hold X and hope for the best. Best. Now, you know, that's not a legitimate option anymore because before you could usually get it on and then you would die and then your loot would be safe. But now that's just not going to happen. So there's been some really tense standoffs, you know, around the extraction rope. You see another group coming, everyone's just kind of looking at each other, kind of circling the rope, and it's made the dark zone a lot more intense. By the way, if you actually do go and cut a rope in the dark zone, you will instantly turn rogue. 
Now one more thing that they've done to the Dark Zone is that they've actually changed the way loot is rewarded somewhat and they've done this by adding sealed caches as drops in the Dark Zone. So when you kill an enemy before patch 1.2 they would simply drop some weapons or armor but you would be able to see specifically what you got. Now with patch 1.2 you can kill an enemy boss and instead of dropping you know a high-end M1A or a high-end you know piece of gear he now might drop a high-end sealed cache and it's like a sealed box that you're actually going to have to extract it and then you're going to have to open it in your stash to then see what's inside it. Now sometimes you open a sealed cache and you just get you know an armor piece or a weapon piece and it's basically as if that boss was going to drop that gear or weapon anyways and then you just kind of had to wait a little longer to see what that actually is. But as you can see here I've actually also got you know opening a sealed cache and gotten two different high-end items in one sealed cache. I got a weapon and an attachment. So that's a cool feature is that some sealed caches can open with, they give you multiple rewards. They can give you, again, up to two high ends. They give you some dark zone currency. They can give you dark zone keys, I believe. So they're definitely worth opening. In fact, even the purple sealed caches, because you can get different rarities of sealed caches, you can get purple sealed caches, you can get a uh, high end, and you can even get green like gear sealed caches, and then opening those will give you a guaranteed random gear piece. So you can get all these different sealed caches and they all give more rewards usually than just one weapon and again the most common reward is that you get a weapon or an armor piece and then you also get that additional currency for the dark zone which is already worth it and like I was saying before the additional currency is going to make a lot of people even start picking up those purple sealed caches now what these sealed caches have done is they've created an awesome dynamic in the dark zone this all seems simple right like me explaining that it kind of just seems like well you just got to wait a little longer to see what you got from a boss drop and maybe you get two high ends instead of one whoop de doo but it's caused a really interesting shift in how people play the dark zone mainly people are now extracting a lot more often because before when you were looking for a specific thing you would just not pick up so many different items if you had really good set armor knee pads for example it's not like you're gonna go around picking up all of the different high-end knee pads you see you're just gonna ignore them but no longer because of these sealed caches people don't know what's in them it could be anything it could be the god roll m1a we're all looking for so people are always picking up these caches you're never not gonna pick up a high-end cache right so people's inventory for the dark zone they fill up so much faster I'm at nine out of nine items so much faster than before because I'm grabbing all of these sealed caches because I don't know what they are and again people are filling up their slots because they're picking up all of these caches so they're extracting more often and extracting itself has become a lot more intense because of the ability to cut the rope. So the whole atmosphere of the Dark Zone, just because of these little things, just because of adding sealed caches, has changed for the better. And the last thing I want to touch on is that finally, finally, they have added your stash to all of the different checkpoints on the outskirts of the dark zone. So you can just go to a checkpoint and then check your stash, open up all your sealed caches, look at all your weapons, even equip new weapons and new armor pieces that you want to try out without having to go all the way back to your base of operations or to a safe house. So extremely happy that they did that. That was an absolutely excellent idea. It should have been done a long time ago, but I'm glad that's implemented now. So, in summary, patch 1.2 has changed the Dark Zone for the better. A lot more people are coming into the Dark Zone because you now have a reasonable chance to get some really good loot. On top of that, the Dark Zone is a lot more intense because people are extracting more often because of the sealed caches, and extracting is a lot more dangerous because of the ability for players to cut the rope. So, good job, Division. Keep it up. Now that's it for the video, I hope you guys enjoyed. Now if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating or sharing this video. I greatly appreciate it. Now if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickHackus, that's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day. What is up guys, Rick Hack is here with the review of the M44 Bolt Action Marksman's Rifle variant in The Division, a gun that makes getting a million damage easy.